Good evening. I will call the January 19th, 2016 Board of Directors meeting to order. We have circulated the minutes of the uh, December meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Steve Schultz, is there a second? Patty DeRosa, thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say, signify aye. Thank you very much. We have approved minutes. Uh, David Gourlay is here somewhere. David, would you please come forward and give us a manager's report? Thank you, Stuart, and uh, welcome everybody here to this great meeting. I'm the kind of the opening act for what's to follow. I'll try to make it as exciting as possible. One day I will get on the main uh, main screen, but today I'm just the opening act. My big one of my one of my one of my theories really in golf management is just trying to get better every day, and that's really what we're trying to do out on the golf course and the facilities and tennis and fitness and food and beverage. So that's kind of the underlining. Uh, comment that we have with all our staff. If, if those that remember, this is the first year we've, we've uh, taken over the pro shop operation. I've heard a lot of good things. Uh, we're doing a lot of sales down there. Please help to support. We have a tremendous staff down there. Obviously, Billy does a great job and will uh, uh, order anything custom, custom for you. Setting standards. We did hire a uh, new golf course superintendent. You can see on the left-hand uh, picture there, Raphael. And he's setting some high standards. You're going to see some unusual things going on on the golf course. One of the things that we install, instilled this year since he's been here is we paint the, the smallest detail. We even paint the cups, I'm sure everyone doesn't know this, every single day. Every day for us is tournament day at Boca Grove. So whether you bring a guest or a golfer or anybody from out of town, it's always going to be painted. It's always going to be set up like a tournament. You can see us out here leveling the heads. Uh, some people on the far uh, bottom right, have ever, anyone ever curious what they put around those trees, the palm trees down there, that white uh, material, what is that? Everybody know what that is? I was curious myself, you know? And so that's why I put it on here. It's actually, it's magnesium sulfate, and it makes the, uh, the palms uh, a little greener. Sometimes they get chlorotic. I had thought initially that we did this for insect in insects to stop them going up in the health of the trees, but really it's to keep the uh, palms nice and green when they go chlorotic. Question? Is it harmful to dogs? No. Unless they eat a lot of it. Unless they just eat the whole ring. It's kind of so. Uh, a couple of rains and you'll see it gone, so it's, it's more just for the health of the uh, plant, but that's a good question. Again, head leveling going on. Uh, one of the things we did for tennis this year, I just wanted to make sure Roberto uh, built a, na a nice uh, soda uh, stand on the left-hand side there. So we have soda out at the, uh, at the tennis, more, uh, more for them. We continued on our cart path paving out there at tennis. We've got some parking. Uh, let me see. We've got a little more excess, ex extra parking that we didn't have before, and we've leveled all the pavers. Those, golf, those that are golf members here, you can see on number three, we did the entire... The entire hole on number three this year, and it turned out pretty nice. So, again, just trying to keep improving something every day. This is a slide that's kind of nice to, uh, for me, being uh, my first year at Boca Grove, is how we ended up doing this year. And you'll see our estimates now for the end of December. We had budgeted to be at zero, and that's what we tried to do. We're a zero-based budget. And if you could take a look year to date where we are, we're at $650,000 ahead of budget, which is almost a million dollar swing from last year. So uh, I'd just like to thank the board. I know the board's sitting over on the side there for giving me some leeway in a lot of the operations that we do out on the golf course. And as a result, I think we made some great strides in being financially sound. So please thank you for that. Uh, one of the other things we always put in is just our current balance for the capital fund at three quarters of a million dollars and our social capital at almost $2.6 million. Home sales, oh, I guess I'm into, am I into POA? Am I not, nah, I guess I can do that one very quickly. Very, I can do it very quickly. One closing to date, because we're starting January, two pending. Non-resident memberships, just an update. We do have 12. 
to date. Everyone signed up for next, uh, for next year. Some of the things we're looking at is some new marketing techniques. We're going to see if we can, ex can kind of the, get to the limits of what we can actually do in marketing for non-resident members for Boca Grove. So we're investigating that, and we're going to get some advice on that. But to remain within our 501c7 status, we don't want to advertise and then lose our status. Again, I always finish with please membership. We need your help always in, in events, tournaments, private events, and member referrals because that's really what makes uh, uh, us move forward. And that is all I've got for this uh, portion of it. I know we've got a big presentation coming up. Thank you, David. Actually, we're not adjourning the meeting at this point. Uh, Tonight, tonight is, uh, on behalf of the board, a very, very exciting night for Boca Grove, we believe. We're going to be presenting a project that addresses many of the needs of our club. Uh, and it's a fairly lengthy presentation, so we would ask you to hold your questions until the presentation is over, uh, because we may be answering many, many of those, uh, of those questions. Let me start by saying the proposed renovation project will have no additional cost to our members. I just want you to remember that. But I'd like to start by just talking a little bit about Boca Grove and what we're all about. Our vision is to inspire and enable members to enjoy every day of their lives. And our mission at Boca Grove is to deliver a boutique lifestyle set in an oasis of uncompromising beauty with facilities and activities that encourage healthy mind, body experiences, a strong sense of community, and lasting friendships. And the values that we live by and that guides us in our decision-making process Maintain Boca Grove as the most desirable community in South Florida. Offer high quality facilities and services. Increase maximum home values in our community. Preserve our high quality golf community and its full service friendly atmosphere. Allow management to maintain the quality service and value promised and to provide exceptional facilities that enrich property values. The facts are that we and many of our neighboring communities maintain our position in a fiercely competitive local country club marketplace involves continually investing in our club and evolving to meet the needs of current and future members. And that's what tonight's all about, how we invest in our club. Our competitors, and we do have competitors, are working diligently to establish themselves as elite and family friendly, and many of them have already embarked upon com and completing significant renovations to revitalize their club. And that, again, is what tonight's about here at Boca Grove. In 2013 and 2014, Bernie Shavitz chaired a strategic planning committee, and they adopted a mission, which was to develop a guiding vision for the future viability of Boca Grove, to determine strategies going forward, recommendations for future actions that require attention and implementation, short and long term, to focus on our members' quality of life while elevating property values very consistent with the club's vision and with the club's mission. They identified strengths, the size of our community, the location of Boca Grove, the golf course, the tennis courts, the dining experience, management, the clubhouse, and the landscaping and appearance of our community. In addition, they identified areas or issues that the board and the membership should focus on for the future. The fitness center, 
lighting, younger families, reputation in the real estate community, entrances and signage, resale value of homes, reserve funds, and recreational facilities for children. The asterisk items were those that they felt should be addressed sooner rather than later. Early in 2015, uh, the board embarked upon a survey for our members, and you identified the positives of our community. Satisfaction living at Boca Grove, the members, the people that you associate with, and the friends that you make, the grounds, the golf course, and the tennis courts, the location, the size of our community, the security, and the staff, as well as the dining experience. Again, in sync with what the Strategic Planning Committee identified. But you also identified some negatives. The clubhouse needs updating. The fitness center needs improvement. The entrance and guard houses also need updating. The pool area and cafe need improvement. Lighting on Boca Grove Boulevard. This, by the way, was confirmed, if, as many of you know, in November, Boca Grove hosted a, uh, a Realtor's Day where we, they came in and looked at our facilities and did a tour of the homes for sale, and we sent a survey to them, and many of these things were confirmed by that group. The objectives of this renovation project Protect the good life by investing in our community, and invest we must. It's just like your home. If you don't continually invest in your home, it begins to get seedy and all of a sudden loses value. Enhances our member experience. We can talk about attracting new members to Boca Grove, but I think the board's first objective is to make sure that the current members have a wonderful experience in, in all of their activities at Boca Grove. That's what we're about, and we should be addressing that. Make Grove, Boca Grove more attractive for potential buyers. There's a competition here. When people think about moving to the Boca Raton area, they don't only look at one community. They look at multiple communities, and therefore, we are in competition with the other communities. And whether we like it or not, that will continue to be in the future. Virtually every other community, gated community in Boca, in Boca Raton area, have, have or are about to embark upon renovation product, uh, projects to upgrade their facilities. We believe, the board believes, that we should be doing the same. Become family, more family friendly. And it addresses the issues that were identified not only by the Strategic Planning Committee, but also by you, the members, in a survey. And it is fiscally responsible. The highlights. It maintains the integrity of our reserves. As uh, David showed you earlier, we have a capital fund that has about $750,000 in it. And we anticipate that during this project, that fund will increase. We have a social capital fund that has almost $2.6 million in it. We plan on using some of those funds for this project, but we will never allow that fund to go below $1 million so that if something unforeseen happens, we will have the capacity to deal with it. The project will be phased in a manner that the impact on you, the members, will be minimized. It does not change your current capital contributions. Currently, each member has a monthly capital charge for the club and a quarterly capital charge for the POA. Those charges, plus our reserves, will enable us to complete the project with no additional cost to any member. And I've already said that. And now, to look into the, the real project and the details of that project, I'd like to call on Carmine Bielardello, who, who some of you have met, 
but we'll walk you through uh, the project. Carmine has been working on this uh, since last March and has done just a marvelous, marvelous job. So join me in welcoming Carmine to uh, front and center. <clears throat> Thank you. Good job. Is this working? Okay, I, I'm Italian, so I can't stand behind that thing. I gotta walk and move and point. Oh, where's the uh, laser? Where's, oh. This is a scientific laser that, right? I get to do that and I could shine it in anybody's eyes who asks yes, a real pain in that question. Um, okay, so March, I, I don't know how many of you were here, I guess it was October, when I presented sort of the first floor of the clubhouse. So I, I'd like to get a, a feeling of how many saw that presentation. So I don't want to repeat a lot of things like uh, my background or any of that. I have 45 years in the design, real estate, construction business. I graduated from Parsons School of Design in New York. I taught there for nine years. I taught at Drexel and uh, NASA Community College, New York School of Interior Design. I ran real estate for Citibank and I worked for a guy named Joel Plumeri for about 20 years who was the president of Citibank, Shearson Lehman Brothers, and the last 13 years of my career before I retired to Boca Raton, I mean to Boca Grove, was I worked at a company called Willis, um, which is one of the largest insurance brokers in the world, headquartered in London, built a skyscraper with a really famous architect, Norman Foster, took three years of my life. We won the best building in London in 2008, best building in Europe in 2009. Um, but the, 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 re the reason I think it's significant um, this is not an ego thing for me, it's that I have a lot of experience in this. I am perfectly suited to help us all do this. Not only did I work on designs and develop programs, I was responsible for operating all of that stuff. Willis was four million square feet and 400 branches in 100 countries around the world, operation center in London, New York, whatever, and dining, I had six chefs that reported into me, security, facilities, real estate, all of that. So, Many of the things that happen here are things that I've had to deal with over the last 20 years, and so I'm familiar with it. Um, and uh, just one other thing that I said last time that I spoke that I think is important for you all to know is how did I get involved in this? <clears throat> they asked me. <laughs> it was simple as that. A couple of the board members knew me and said, would you take a look at what these previous architects had done and tell us what you thought about it? I looked at it. I was polite at first. <laughs> And then after a while I said, it's kind of silly. I don't think some of this makes sense. I don't think it's well done. And I think they're charging us too much money. And so they asked me to take it on. And then Stuart asked me to take another thing on. And then another thing. And so this is a project that grew from a room to a floor to the entire building to take a look at the fitness center. What do you think about the guard gates? And so it's really developed into a master plan. So number one, I was asked. Another important thing that you should know is I'm not getting paid anything on this. Zero, 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 making me nuts. Um, <laughs> only kidding. Same salary as the board. Stuart said I could tee off anytime I want. I get free tee times. Um, um, the other thing that you should know is that you'll see a bunch of consultants' names up here. I've never worked with any of them before in my life. They've come through relationships. We interviewed a bunch of people. We interviewed. Um, uh, some architects and interior designers and, and cost consultants. Three of them are sitting over here now. Um, representing the architectural firm that we fired is Rudy Acevedo. Uh, he's Acevedo and Williams is the firm. Ron Hostetler is our cost consultant, uh, been an estimator and worked in construction companies almost as long as I have. And Annette Smith is our interior designer who uh, came out of a firm with uh, Rudy that they've worked together for many, many years, done blue martinis and a couple, couple, couple of country clubs. And so we put a team together. That's really what it's become. Everything you see here now is, if I say I, forgive me, because it's not an I. There's a lot of people that worked on it, including people in this room. Believe it or not, when I speak to people and I get feedback, you know, we try to change and adapt things. And so <clears throat> Again, these are the consultants that we used, architects, interior design, bunch of engineers. Some of the engineers worked on the project when it was done in 2008. Some of them were sued and they ended up paying and they still decided to come back and help us again. Um, and um, okay, clubhouse. So the first part of this is a bunch of parts that make up what you're going to see tonight. And like he said, if you could please just hold all your questions because there's a lot of information 
that we've gone through in the past nine or ten months to put this all together. In fact, the last time it presented, I felt a little bit, there were a lot of questions being asked about, well, what about this? Well, what about that? And, I, and we had already worked on it, so I'm happy to show you all the other things that we've worked on. But um, again, I'm going to reiterate this. I'm going to try and go through it a little bit faster than I did last time. But when I, when I was asked about the, uh, the bar moving into the club room, there was drawings and renderings that were done to do that. Did I think it makes sense? Do I think what, the, what was proposed made any sense? I didn't like it. I didn't think it was done well. It was, they were building banquettes in here. And <clears throat> so I, I really didn't approach it as a designer. I approached it as a critic. And I, and, I, and I thought it was expensive and didn't make much sense. The more I thought about it and the more I talked to some folks here that had been here for 30 years and whatnot, they said, you know, it used to be the bar was at the other end of the club. And so the more I thought about that, the more I went, well, I'm a golfer. I'm not a tennis player, as you can tell. Um, it did make sense. To, if the, the club had a tradition for 20 years of having the 19th hole at the other end of the club, most clubs, and by the way, as part of this process over the last 10 months, I visited about 10 clubs to see how they do it, to see what they're doing, to see the state of art of how they're doing things. And <clears throat> almost every single one of them within, within striking distance of where you finish golf has some sort of bar or restaurant facility. So that became obvious to me. And that, as I put an overview of what was going on here, because then I became a diner and a member, um, the thing that struck me, number one, was that there's a, you know, the, the thing we call chippers and the grill room, it's a little confusing. It has banquettes, yet it's beautiful. It has wood, yet it has those banquettes again. So, and then we, we had some issues with dress coat. You got people coming in there in flip-flops and cut-off jeans. And part of it is because it doesn't have a clear identity. It's, it's confused as to what it wants to be and what it should be. And the same thing is true with the windows. Windows is a room that's too small. We're in it now. If you come in here at certain times, there'll be very casual dressed events going on. It's not a true event room. And I'll give you an example. These chairs that we're sitting here now, and this is something I've talked to the board about, these are event chairs. If you go, if you watch the Golden Globes the other night, they had these chairs in there. These are the chairs that are required to get events into an event room. We have the chairs that you have in your den. They're big, they're stuffed, they're oversized. They're great and they're comfortable, but they're clubby. So there's a lot of confusion in terms of what the identity is of what we want from these different facilities. Um, the fine dining, I guess, in the past has been more popular than it is now. I've been taking a look at the numbers. The numbers just have dropped precipitously. Um, <clears throat> and I personally don't think it's that great of a room. It kind of looks out at gone with the wind drapes and trees on the other side of it, low ceiling. It's, you know, I'm not, if I'm going to have a $50 steak, it's not necessarily someplace I want to bring a guest to. I'd rather have something that's a little bit more dramatic, dramatic for the country club that I live in. So that was my feelings about that. And then, of course, the ladies' card room. Um, just seemed to be in the wrong place. And it seemed to make sense to think about trying to move that. So in stratifying, just from the big picture of what we thought should happen, is you know, more and more what we're seeing in clubs is that there's a desire for casual dining. Hence the problem that we have with our dress code. Because more and more, we want to be casual. More, we, no, hardly anybody wants to wear a jacket to dinner anymore. <clears throat> so the trend here in the United States, everywhere in clubs is for casual dining. And we hadn't clarified that. We, would kind of, we kind of do it everywhere. So that's number one. Number two, you know, obviously we, we talk about the event. I need a drink of water. <clears throat> Thank you. We talk about this event room being undersized. And so if in any way, shape, or form we could tackle that, we wanted to. We're obviously limited by the envelope, but what could we do here to make it better, but to give it clarity? And that's what this diagram is trying to address, clarity, that there's a place for members, there's a place for events, and there's a place for casual dining. And of course, the ladies' card room comes over to a space over here that we need to make as spectacular as we can for them. And so here's a rendered floor plan. These are not representative of the colors. In general, don't get crazy over colors tonight. The purpose of this whole presentation is to get you familiar with what sort of like the overall plan is. Does it make sense for us to spend this kind of money on this? 
not if it's going to be blue or green or yellow. Yes, we've picked out stuff. We need to do that in order to present it to you. We need to do that to price it. But the detailing of all of this and how it gets built happens after you guys vote yes. Um, so <clears throat> here the, the ladies' card room gets moved to what is now the club room. Um, and there's, and the, there's a detailed page on every one of these that I will take you through. So I'll just give you the overview at first. So the ladies' card room, uh-oh. Trigger hair, hair trigger. Um, this becomes obviously the uh, casual, you know, I started calling it the 19th hole. That probably was a misnomer because it's not really just for golfers. It's that casual dining again. It's something more like a sports bar, casual, whatever. And so, it's because we anticipate more and more in clubs, if you talk to other club people, if you look at the literature, more and more casual dining is where it's headed. And so, would the room be big enough? And <clears throat> so what we're proposing is that we take the walls down around the fireplace and we expand into what is now the wine room and make a big casual uh, uh, 19th hole room. And I'll, I'll get into the details of it in a minute. In the, in the uh, windows, what we're proposing is that, you know, the, these walls that were built here, I guess the idea was that these doors would magnificently open up the whole way and we could put 5,000 people in here. Well, guess what? You can't. If you bring a, I, 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 last time you heard me say this, I'll say it again. If you bring a bride in here to show them the place to entertain it, they ain't putting anybody in that room, and they ain't putting anybody in that room. So you're limited by what you have here. So, so what became apparent is that a lot of this is fluff. Yes, there is one column in there, and yes, there is one column in here, and we will deal with that, but it's worth it in order to make the room bigger, right, and more dramatic, without having to spend a lot of money. So these doors get moved back, this set of doors come down, um, and we're able to get a dance floor and maybe a permanent stage in here, not sure. On the, on the last end of it, uh-oh, did it again. Um, what is now Chippers in the Grill Room, which to me really is one room, uh, as a newcomer here in particular, what struck me about what I call the octagon at the end, I mean, that's where a lot of that millions of dollars was spent, right? It was in that building and in the verandas. Um, you know, it's got some great space to it. And if we could tap into that, if we could make it a place for us, this is the place for members. How do we make it the members' dining room? But how do we make it so that we can change it and have fine dining in there as well? And so that was the idea, is to, um, given the numbers that we're seeing on fine dining, why couldn't we make fine dining one night a week in the octagon, dress it up, change it, but you don't have to do radical construction in there. The bar is a silly bar. It doesn't make sense as a bar. You can't stand at it. It's an angle like this, so two people, as soon as two people stand at it, they're backing up on one another. It just doesn't, it's not really a very good bar for much of anything, but we could make that into the wine bar with, for $1.98. So that was the concept, and then moving, obviously moving the ladies' card room over to this end. So <clears throat> what you see, I'm in a lot of trouble with this button. Um, this is the existing picture. I hope you can see that. You all know what that room is like. It's dark. Um, it's in keeping sort of with this whole uh, walnut mahogany look that was, the place was built in. And so clearly, uh, in discussions with the ladies' card room, they went, ah, that room is dark. We don't want to be in there. We have views now. So what you'll see here is we got some really good pricing on putting windows in that back wall, right? Lightning, everything is, is lightened. It's, it's, it, it's, it, okay, the chairs are no good. We'll pick new chairs. Um, by the way, that, you're right. The chair, there's going to be a chair selection. Well, the issue with the chairs are that we've got to put some people together to pick it, number one. Number two, when you do these renderings, these renderings, by the way, in case you don't know it, I've been doing this a long time. These renders are spectacular. Rudy and his team have done a fantastic job on it, but they cost money. And so every time we change every little thing in it, I got people going back doing stuff. So we didn't want to make everything as perfect, perfect, perfect. And we haven't done any discussions with the groups or any of that stuff. So you're right. And my feeling is that this thing will probably get a little bit more modern before it's done yet. Because that was one of the things that came out of the last series of meetings is, 
she would really like to see the place modernized a little bit more. So some of the things that we did after that, you're going to see became a little bit more modern. But at any rate, um, we took the chandelier out. We're putting a cove light that wraps around these already existing coves in here to bounce light off of the ceilings, to make it light with the windows. It's going to be a spectacular room. It's really going to be a spectacular room. Um, here's the layout. It seats, I think, 64 in this layout, adding windows on the edge, existing fireplace and buffets. We're building some stuff in below the mirrors. The front wall is going to uh, keep the openings where they are. There's going to be frosted glass so you can't see into it kind of thing. On, on this back wall over here, there will be TVs because we didn't want to be able to have you walk by and look in there and see TVs on the wall, but there will be TVs on this wall. Um, in the cabinetry, we're going to be able to, uh-oh, keep doing the wrong button. In the cabinetry, we're going to be able to put like a couple of mini fridges and a little ice maker and a permanent coffee, like a real coffee machine in there instead of the <coughs> from 1954 coffee things, right? Um, so all things considered, I think it's going to be spectacular, but I'm prejudiced. Um, 19th hole bar and grill. So this is probably a little bit more modern than the last time you saw it. This is over an actual photo. Um, here's what the photo of what it looks like now. And uh, 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 a couple people said to me, uh, and I think I said this last time, that every time we've ever had a bar here at Boca Grove, the bartenders always got to look out the windows, and we got to look at the wall. <laughs> I said, well, you know what, that makes sense. And then I went to St. Andrews, and they actually have a bar that's on windows that looks out, and it's pretty cool. And so um, I, Rudy and I talked about it. I said, we're going to put the bar along the windows. There's an existing uh, storeroom. And I'll, there's a couple more renderings after this. There's an existing storeroom in here that goes from here to here. We're going to extend it to the kitchen to the, where the edge of the hard surface is just before the glass. And so this will be a kitchen. Um, we, we still debate the menu and what it's going to be. My concept and what I said from day one, and I think Stuart's with me on this one, is it's the turn on steroids. You know, it's the kind of stuff you get at the turn, maybe a burger, maybe a, something, a little something else. It's not going to be, you're not getting field court on blue here. Now, if, if, if we take uh, one evening, whether it's a Friday or a Saturday, and we make that the fine dining night in the, in the octagon wine bar room, then maybe that night, because this is the patterns that clubs are seeing now, maybe that night this place stays open for light bites or tapas or something like that. It's up to, it's, you know, I'm just trying to provide the tools for a program to be put in place for management to do those kinds of things. But that's the idea behind it. Um, and because we're breaking this through, there's two, there's two kinds of uh, experiences here. One, we keep the fireplace. One of the things I've said from day one is the painting of uh, downstairs of uh, Arnold Palmer and uh, Gary Player. Yeah. That belongs in a fireplace. Yeah. You know, it doesn't belong down in a corridor downstairs. That sucker's going up here right on the fireplace. <laughs> um, and the other thing that's interesting about this is we start, we, as, we, as we become more event or not, look, we're not going to become you know, the event capital. We're not Boca West. We're not planning event after event. We can't, we can't have zero either. You know, we need to make a few bucks here. And we need to be able to have our own big events here. So one of the things that I think is, ah, is, we are keeping these doors that's on the other side here. So that now you will also see when, we, when I show you the plan for this room, we're proposing that doors go over here out to the verandas. We've got these $20 million verandas and octagon, and you've got to go through a $9 screen door over there to get out to them. So the idea is that you now have this veranda that you can have a cocktail party on or an event, or you can have the cocktail party in here, the pre-event in here, and boom, you open all the doors and you go into the big event room, kind of like the way events run, you know? Um, <clears throat> and so this really works out really well for that. Here's what the place would look like at night um, if we were to, to do some night things. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, I showed the board a, a couple weeks ago. Uh, there's a, a, a new light fixture that's, you know, obviously there's a lot of cool things that have been going on with LED lights for a while now. But this company has come out with an LED light that actually fits up into or replaces either these round or square fixtures. And it's like a theater light. They cost $350, $400 each. They're not a lot of money. 
and you can do spectacular things with it. And I, what I said to the board is, the night that we had Cirque du Soleil here, all of that <clears throat> stuff that was going on, we could have done that with lighting. And so part of the plan when we do this room is to replace these lights with a proper lighting system. I mean, right now we have like, those lights go on, those lights go on, and that's, <laughs> you know, that's about it. There's no spotlights, there's no, there's no anything. So it's relatively cheap and relatively simple for us to put this kind of lighting into a room like this. So we will do this in this room, we will do it in the, what I call the octagon with the wine bar, and we will do it in here so that we can um, stage events and have some fun with it. If we wanted to do an all blue, you could do, they do, each light does a range of like 500 colors or something like that. Uh, it's, they're amazing. The members grill and wine bar. And, and Stuart and I haven't talked about this, but I think at some point there should be a naming kind of thing here. If you do move forward with this program, you know, um, whether it's you stick with the chippers or whatever. Um, but this is a, a slide that simplifies what goes on there now. There's brown stuff all up in here. There's brown stuff all up in here. The idea is to paint it out white. Let this beauty of the space take hold. All these things, like in here, for example, this brown stripe that goes around the ceiling here, it's just a distraction. It's a distraction to your eye. This is a great volume of space. This is a beautiful chandelier, yet all of these things distract you visually from making it a great space. And so that's what we're trying to do here, is let the space you know, show its own beauty. And by the way, again, I use the term $1.98. This is $1.98's worth of stuff. This is paint and fix up and whatnot. This is not a lot of money. The other thing is, what we want to do is take the bar and make it into the wine bar. Take the paraphernalia that's in this other room, the refrigerators and whatnot, Re retrofit it over there, get rid of the TVs, make those wine racks, even if they're only for display. <clears throat> There's a low wine rack along the wall. Maybe we buy a couple of upright ones to go in there. Make that the wine bar. Um, the, well, what, what happens in here, uh, what happens in here now is there's banquettes in there, right? It, it costs a lot of money to do that. It's as simple as that. One, one of the things that I think we've achieved, yeah. Hold the questions. You're going to get the light. Um, no, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, I, I, I haven't emphasized enough that one of the things that was always in the back of my head was money. I mean, it would be, it, some of the things that you would say, you go, oh, well, we could do, we could do this, we could do that. If you want to spend, you know, five, 10, 15 million dollars, you could do all kinds of great stuff here. This is not the 15 million dollar plan. This is a lot less than that. And so that was always in my head. And I think we achieve what we want to achieve uh, anyway. Um, one of my pet peeves, and I, and I don't think that this is fully embraced yet, is I think we do way too many buffets, and I think we spend too much time and effort on those buffets. And I think the in and out, the moving of them is a real problem. And so what, this is still up for grabs. We haven't worked it all through. But in this proposal, we'll, th this is a service bar that you stand over here. You know the, People who are waiting and stand over here and then they bring your stuff out to it. This currently, ah, this currently is just a wall and then there are banquettes that come off of here, right? There's banquettes here, banquettes here, and this is just a wall. So we're, what we're proposing is that this become a permanent buffet. I prefer the term salad bar because if you look at how big organizations, the kind of things that I was involved with in restaurants and cafeterias, they have a salad bar. Now, those salad bars could have chicken and shrimp and other kinds of things in there, but it's a salad bar. It doesn't have all that stuff. And then we're also proposing is that in this area that we now create an entrance. The entrance, you enter the room this way instead of this way. When you come down that corridor and you look into the, and you look into the grill room, see the side of the banquettes. There's nothing dramatic or nice about that particularly. Whereas we have this spectacular room that's in front of us with the big ceiling and all of that. So we don't need two entrances. So we're going to take that one entrance um, and enclose it and make it a permanent carvery and omelet station. And it gets closed up with doors. So in the evening, when we want to have dining in there or have finer dining in there, it gets closed up with a couple of wood doors. And it's there all the time. And we get out of this rolling out the six things of fry stations for the omelets and all that stuff. It's there. The numbers don't warrant us doing much more than this, but if they do, we could always add portable things. Um, but the idea in general is that this becomes more of the member's restaurant, and we're, we're taking a look at this. Chairs is an important part of it. Maybe some of the things that we like about windows, we have these 
chairs that are more comfortable, well, maybe that belongs in that room you know, or something like that. And those are the kinds of things that we'll take a look at. Um, you will also know uh, Annette and her team has, and has taken a look at the tables in here. The tables that are in the, in the grill room now are really expensive. And they're really nice. They have an inlay into them. They are a lot of money. In fact, um, just by adding to them, we found out who the manufacturers, just by adding the few that we need to it, it's almost the cost as if we bought new for everywhere. But we're going to try and salvage and use as many of those tables as possible. Again, the economics of it are important. Here it is at nighttime. Now, what we didn't do, didn't want to sp spend the money with the with the, uh, with the renders and the architects is, but now we get all that lighting that I showed you in the 19th hole that you, know, you can really change the whole effect of the room. I mean, you could come in here and, uh, on uh, Valentine's Day and have like a pink red room or have a blue room. It's just literally flipping switches on it. It's that simple. And uh, the controls on it are fantastic. This is taking the table that is currently in the, in the club room, putting it here, putting it in the center on the thing, putting a nice display on it tablecloths, candles, and you got your fine dining that I think is a room that's, um, again, I'm prejudiced, 10 times better than the other room for fine dining. And then on this side, the banquettes come out. This is a rendition, an artist's rendition of this sort of uh, permanent buffet. I don't know what that's going to look like. I kind of would like to have something that closed up more in wood and probably is going to be two-tiered so that we can get double the amount of lineal footage of buffet there. Um, we currently run about 40 to 50 feet of buffet space when we run it out here. This is 16 or 18 feet. If we put two layers, we've got 36 feet plus the permanent uh, carvery. We're close. The ballroom. Now, we haven't spent time rendering it or coloring it all like that. We've spent our time uh, um, trying to engineer and figure out what we're going to do here. We were hoping that that column wasn't there. Um, I guess when the those of you that may, may remember this, when, when this was done, the cost to eliminate this column was tremendous, and the money was spent to put a, a, a structure in here to support the chandelier. So <clears throat> you ended up with these two walls. The column that we see where it is in the layout doesn't bother me that much. I think it's much more important. Um, where's that button? That column, this column is the column that's over there. We're not sure about this. We might be able to take these out. Um, but the numbers are pretty comfortable, 25 tables. You get up to 10 people sitting at an event with this kind of a chair. You'll get 250 people in here real easy. If, if Pierre could get 195 in here for Cirque du Soleil, I have no idea what he could get in here for real. But clearly, it lays out from an architect's point of view of 250. Once we're over 200 to 250, we qualify for a lot of kinds of weddings and events that we don't qualify for now. Um, I think actually Steve Schultz said in one meeting, where is he, that do you ever consider take, you know, putting, making these doors open and making this part of the 19th hole the dance floor? You know, so we have the options of doing those kinds of things to increase the numbers if we have to. But this is pushing it out as much as possible. And again, um, I like to think that we're brilliant. And then somebody said, oh, that's the way it used to be. <laughs> so it seems like every time you turn around, you know, that's where the bar was. That's where the dance floor was. Um, and the other thing that's monumentally important to me is I hate this wall. I absolutely hate it. It's when you, when you come from the lobby, there's no spatial experience whatsoever. This room, whether you like it or don't like it, you like the style, you don't like the chandelier, it's got volume, it's got a certain amount of drama. We're going to paint it out so it's even more dramatic. We're going to, Larry, we're getting rid of the ceiling tiles. It's going to She Rock. You're welcome. We're going to put those sexy lights in here. Just little things like that will become spectacular. So that when you come through here, you're going to go through our lobby, which is a normal size space. And this is a Frank Lloyd Wright kind of thing. That's what Frank Lloyd Wright used to do. You'd weave you through a series of smaller spaces, and then boom, when you got to the big space, it seemed even more dramatic. And this wall, you come through there, you bring a guest in, you come here for dinner, and there's wood wall. And there's usually something stationed over there, and there's something stationed over here. We're going to get rid of that. The wall position is going to stay the same, but it's going to be something low. I don't know if it's a planter or glass sculpture or something like that. And that's what this represents. Um, something low down here so that the proverbial bride comes through on the tour to rent the place, and they go, whoa, 
That's some room. That's what we want. We want a little bit of the wow factor, and it's easy to do, and that's part of it. <clears throat> and in order to achieve that, we need to move the doors, which are about here, out to the front, because what happens is when they're here, it pushes the Mater D and everybody back here, and this is the service route, right? So he's got people coming down the corridor, bumping into, you know, literally bump into it, but it's, it's not well thought through. So what we want to do is bring the doors out, bring the Mater D station out so that all of this stuff happens out here, and it leaves it a little bit uh, more, better circuit for the, for the service. And also, you're sitting back here and you see that drama. Where the, over here, we haven't shown this anywhere, but in the uh, lobby where there's a, a credenza now, we want to put a bench there so that, again, it's that backup, that whole backup effect. The lobby, okay, you ready? Very different. One of the things that we heard last time was, why are we sticking with all the wood? Why are we doing this? If you look at all the clubs that we're competing with, they're much more modern and contemporary. This was hard. This is really hard to do, to find that place of where it's modern and clean and fresh, but not zooby modern, and at the same time respects, you know, the architecture that we have here, which is sort of Georgian and whatnot. So it's simple stuff. These are, these are uh, Barcelona chairs, Barcelona tables. They're classic. They actually are from the 30s. Um, and we're just trying to simplify it and clean it up and let the, let the space be itself. There's, there's a picture down here now, and, and you can see how there's a lot more stuff in there. And um, so, the fitness center. Okay, so there's a lot here to digest. Um, this is the whole site plan. And um, <clears throat> there's no doubt, I don't think there's any mystery to everybody here, the heart of the problem here is really tennis. The tennis people have been shortchanged in this, in this club for a long time. Um, with their operations here in the center here, it really just makes for a really goofy kind of layout. When, when I, I did this, and it just became too many slides for me to present, but the board saw it, we did traffic flow analysis of everything. And if you did the traffic flow for what tennis people do, you know, they either park over here, they come over here, they check in over here, they come back here, they go to play, oh, got to go to the bathroom, got to come back over here. Or if they come over here, they park over here, they got to go through the club or around over here, out here, check in, oh, got to go to the bathroom, got to come back over here. You know, it's like screwy. It's just totally screwy. It makes no sense whatsoever. And the same thing with all the other traffic flow. There's really no great connection between the club and this, the campus. Um, and and the, hence, there's been the discussions over the pavers and speed bumps and whatnot. So the walk here from here to here is just circuitous. You know, eventually, in, in my dream, I'd like to see something, a more strong connection between the two. But for now, <clears throat> that's one of the things we identified. Um, I have a big thing with the, the playground to me is, OK, it's great. We love our kids. I love my kids. It's terrific. But it's way too prominent. If you look at our competitors, you brought our competitors, if you go over to St. Andrews or Polo, one of these places, they have magnificent pool decks. You don't see no jungle gyms right in the middle of them. And you don't see the, the Nina printed Santa Maria sail floating out in front of it with the three things that go. It's just way too prominent. And so first time I presented to the board, I said, move it. Get it out over here. But again, the economics of it, was it really worth it? The concrete slab that's under all of that probably has to be worked with, but do we really want to spend that money now? So you'll see what we're proposing that we do with it. Um, the cafe, ugly, non-functional cafe, <laughs> says it all. And then this is my other favorite thing. And then th this is, you know, I always say it's the dumpster entrance. There's not a dumpster there. There's not a trash can there. But it feels like there should be one there, right? And I feel like it should be going, that's where the trash comes out, that door. But it's not. Um, and so again, if you did the traffic flow, you see people either go through here or they go through here and to get to here. Doesn't make any sense. The gym, uh, the gym, the gym is the gym. It's tired. It's old. It's been a, it's been a slow de-evolution of putting stuff there and whatever. It's too small and it, need, it just needs to be refreshed. Um, the other thing that was an op something I've observed being here a few years is that the kids hang out on the basketball court. There aren't too many places for them. And, and if they go anywhere, that's where it is. And so it seemed to me that there should be something that we could do in this area easily for them. 
the volleyball, at first I said whatever. Actually, there was a proposal in the board meeting the other night to turn the volleyball into, or the, into a bocce court. <laughs> we approve, can we do that? I would like it. Um, and so this now is what we're proposing. We're proposing it starts out with the heart of the plan is to build a tennis center on this piece of land between the little stadium, and I guess this is the teaching court or whatever it is. It's raised, it has magnificent palms there, which um, you know, is a shame to deal with them, but the place is so dysfunctional, and this is the most logical place for it. If you, if you, again, I didn't want to keep adding slides, but if you do traffic flow study, now it's really simple. You come here, go, oh, got to pee, you only got to go to there. So, um, and, it, and we'll have signage out here, and I'll show you that in a minute, that distinguishes the tennis center. We should have, you know, we're, we're, we're small, but we're not tiny either. We do have tennis, we do have golf, we do have a fitness center, we do all these things. Instead, we got, we got one little sign on the side of the building that says fitness center. So we should distinguish all of these areas with its own signage that's prominent and nice. And so this would be the entrance to the tennis place. This is the circuit. It's about, and, it, and there's a, I'll show you the detail on it, it's about 1,200 square feet. Uh, low building, and I'll, and I'll go to the details in a minute. The other important thing about this plan that, that I'm proposing, or we're proposing, is that there currently is an entrance on the side of the pool now. There's a gate that exists there. And so what we're saying is that there needs to be a grand entrance to the pool. You don't need to go through the fitness center. You don't need to go past the dumpsters to get to the pool. The pool should have its own entrance, with its own sign, with a little cabana with towels there, right? And so, I'll show you a picture in a minute, but we're proposing that we, we, we expand this entrance, actually build um, a speed bump that's made out of pavers. You know, it's like six, eight feet wide. That is, the is where you cross in the road to get to the other side. We will cut through the bushes here to create golf cart parking on this side of it, um, but just to create a place for the pool. The other thing that we noticed in looking at it is that in addition to the chairs and tables and things, we have these cabanas. You know, they're like what, 10 feet by 10 feet. We have five of them. And, um, what we're pro and there's a, sort of an idea proposal, a picture in here later on of, we should take one side of the pool and make it like a hotel, or make it like other clubs and have cabanas all along the side. And you'll see some pretty sexy pictures of you put a porcelain pot between them, and we can jazz them up and spend as much money in them as we want. We talked about even putting in, where's Dave? putting in Comcast out there, if somebody, maybe we rent them for the year, maybe we rent them for a weekend, I don't know, but it's, a, it's an idea that changes the dynamic of the pool and how it looks and makes it look um, a lot more progressive. Um, in addition, we want to change the, we want to get rid of the one sail, which only covers three little swings, um, and then the big sail, we want to make sky blue, to just make it disappear into the sky, and, and we want to uh, enclose it with, uh, put shrubs along that wall, and then the other thing is, as you make the, when you come through this fence now, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff here. There's the clock that I, I don't know where it's from. And there's stuff over here. What we want to do is carve that so that there's a turn. So the space naturally turns you and you look to the pool. You see the pool, you see the cafe, you see the pool deck. Boom, that drama. Um, and so this is showing this cut back a little bit to create that entrance that goes that way that brings your focus over to the cafe. When when we first started looking at this, maybe six or seven months ago, my idea was that I wanted to rip this out and build a, a roof over here that was something like that, that squared off with the pool and squared off this way. And then Rudy and I took a tour of it, and Rudy said, you know, that little round roof that's up there is kind of nice looking. It's not that bad. And again, the economics of it was, if it's really kind of cool and we could do something with it, let's do something with it. The ugly part of what's out there is the awning that jumps up three feet and then curves down around it and is like baby puke brown or whatever it is, I don't know. And so it's just, it's horrible. And um, so what we're proposing is that we leave that, we, we wrap this whole thing with an awning, we have some pictures of what we want to do, and then on the back side of the building, which, because this now, now tennis is out of here, it's over here, so we're going to expand into the tennis space, we're going to pop doors out here, make the door that's out here bigger, and then we're going to put a 12-foot slab of concrete or 15-foot slab of concrete along the whole back of the building, again, $1.98, and an awning that goes over it. And so we could do outside exercises. 
Um, we know some people that, that teach at um, St. Andrews, and they do, once a month, they do a twilight spin outside. They get, it's the biggest spin turnout they have. They go outside, and they spin in the evening, and it's a lot of fun. You could do those kinds of events. Maybe we'd even put rubber flooring out there. Um, and then, uh, lastly, what I said is, let's build something over here for the kids. Not kids, youths. Um, I remember my cousin Vinny, youths for the youths. Um, and, and something as simple as over the front entrance of this building is a portico that's, you know, it's a hard structure. It, it's shingled, right? Concrete slab down below and just columns. We're not going to build a building over here yet, but we're going to build a place for them to hang out. And it should have a ping pong table in it and a table and a chair and maybe some electronic hookups. And if we could do that in a couple of other places, we at least give them a little bit of a respite um, from whatever, and you know, I think it's something. This is this costs nothing to do this, and it makes all the sense in the world. And I think it's the kind of thing that they'll use because it gives them enough privacy. You know, you could see them as you drive by. We could put security cameras out here if we want. Um, but but they got they got this kind of area, which is where they hang out now towards the basketball court. <coughs> okay, the tennis center. <coughs> we tried to. This is a Rudy design. Um, and he came up with this idea. I think it's terrific, absolutely terrific. It's just, ah, oh, maybe you can work the button. It's a simple little design where this is really one building here. It's really one big building. But this is a breezeway. This is straight on through. So it's kind of like a deck that looks out at the stadium court and looks out at the training uh, court. Um, there's men's and ladies' bathrooms over here. We'll probably make them a little bit bigger. There won't be locker rooms. There won't be showers. You know, we're just not going to spend that money to do that. Most people, you know, you're in your residential community. We have the locker rooms on the other side where people don't shower anyway. So um, um, men's and ladies on this side, breezeway through. Now, in talking to the tennis folks last week a little bit, they said, gee, we'd like to have a little bit more of a space to maybe have some overlook. We didn't put a second floor on this with an overlook because once you do that, you have handicap laws that are a problem. You gotta have elevators and ramps, and then you have structural issues and something that costs, uh, you know, $1.98 goes to $5. So that was the reason for the low building, and so what we're, we think we're probably gonna end up doing is probably along this side, building a wall, and maybe this becomes a concrete terrace the whole way that they could look out over it. Again, these are relatively, in the cost and the scheme of things, relatively inexpensive to do. Yet, it adds, it adds something tremendously. There's a vista to, uh, uh, to, the, to the tennis viewing and whatnot. Um, pro shop in the middle, office, storeroom. It, you know, it, this is all subject to change. It could, this could become that and that could become that. The idea is that we build a building here. It's about 11, 1,200 square feet. What I've said in terms of cost, could you build a house for $350,000? You probably could. So, that's probably what this thing is going to cost. Something like that. It's a cinder block building. We're going to stucco it. All the stuff on the inside. This is not a six million dollar building. It's a nice build, but it does six million dollars worth of good for what it does to the plan and the people and the people who use it. Um, the aquatic. It's no longer the pool. It's the aquatic center. Okay. So again, don't get crazy over colors. The colors are irrelevant. It could be yellow and blue. It could be blue and white. It could be green and white. It could be whatever. We needed to put something up here to, to get your attention. Um, so starting with, ah! You can't really see it here. This is kind of, now, we, I made this a small rendering. I got this at like 3 o'clock this afternoon. Rudy and I only have been working on this for a day or so. It's not anywhere near what we want it to look like. But the idea was to give you um, an idea of what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do, and I'm going to jump to the, uh, I'm going to jump to this slide, and I'll jump back. Um, I was a member of the Yacht and Racquet Club, Boca Raton, on, on uh, A1A down by Spanish River for about, I don't know, 12 or 15 years. And they have a facility down there called the Cheeky Bar, and it's phenomenal. It's a bar that's out in the open. It has one of those hard roofs over it, and they have roll-down curtains, and, and the usage is tremendous. It's open in the 7 in the morning till 7 at night. You can get breakfast there. You can get a, you can get a meatloaf dinner at nighttime. A little bit different, obviously, than our kinds of place, but, 
But the idea is that there's a bar that's out in the open, that it's fun, and it's TVs, and people use it. Um, our bar is a screened-in porch. Our bar wouldn't make it at Boca Muni golf course <laughs> that's out there. In fact, the, the, the bad news is that what Rudy and I have found out, or Ron and I in particular have found out, is that there's so many things that are not up to code in that place. There's no, there's no violation that we need to worry about. It's just that the first time we touch one screw there, we got to fix everything. And so, um, for example, there's a state law now that says you are not allowed to prepare food outdoors anywhere. All food prep has to be indoors in air-conditioned space. So in our first go around, we were going to put just a sandwich making station out here, um, but we can't do that. It has to be enclosed. It has to be more like the turn where you, you hand it through a window. But the idea is that where the screen is now, the screen comes down and that becomes the bar at that point. A giant bar seating, I don't know, 25 people, Rudy? What does it sit? 20-something people? Um, and, and then the awning that you saw, that striped awning, goes the whole way, all the way around. And it's also down lower. It doesn't jump up three feet above the roof. It's down lower. Um, and so now, again, my apologies. This rendering doesn't quite do it justice. This is not really quite what we want. But you know, there's seating all around it, a lower roof. Uh, uh, TVs all around, and then seating that's also covered by it, and then, and then what we're missing is you know, deck seating. On the other side, this is not what we're going to do. This is just more as an example of the cabanas. We have five cabanas. They're made of aluminum or a metal pipe. We're going to buy five more metal pipes. We're going to buy the canvas that goes over them, and we're going to put 10 along that wall. But these kinds of things are really cool fun that you could put porcelain things there, plants, and there's still enough space in front of those cabanas to put lounge chairs. And so um, I think, Jenny, again, you, you, the drama of coming into this place and seeing the pool deck cleaned up and then the cabanas going this way, again, my approach has been we're not going to spend you know, millions and millions of dollars to do this. This is relatively simple, but it can be very dramatic. And it really upgrades the place tremendously. Um, Stuart asked me at one point to meet with pool people to see about um, an infinity pool and gradual entrance to the pool and what's the general status um, of taking a look at the pool. And my attitude was, ugh, now I got to deal with the pool? And I was like, ah, nothing's going to come of this. Well, Ron and I got an education when we met with the pool guy. I, I, I mean, I, I like to think I'm an observant person, but after this guy came, I got an education. Um, and now you all will. If you take a look at that pool, the paving that comes up to that pool slopes up to the pool like that. And the coping that's on the edge of that pool wraps around, and it covers the old coping. The old coping was never lifted up. And so, in fact, if you look over sort of in this vicinity of where you go over to the tennis courts, I mean, in, a, in about a 15-foot span, there's maybe a one-foot drop. Code now around pools is they prefer zero grade, no drop, they will let you get up to 2%. Well, we are like, I don't know, 15% or something over here. So, and that was because in order, to, in order to not have to rip the coping up, they built everything up. And if you look at the pool now, you'll see all this, how everything slopes away from this pool. So what's the big deal? The big deal is that there's a trough that runs all along under the underside. It's kind of like what pools had in the 50s. It's there. It's old. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not good. It's gonna, in fact, if you look at the wall, between the top coping and that trough, you'll see it's been plastered and it's cracking a little bit. Over time, we're going to have problems with that. It's OK now. We don't have to do anything with it necessarily now. But we, we took a look at what it would take to put a zero infinity pool there, which is basically where the water and the pool are the same level, and they put a trough between it. Um, it's more sanitary. They work better. And so um, this guy gave us an education on that. And, and he said, "What? by the way, what? Most, people, most pools now are being designed is with one area that is distinctly lower than the other area. So when you think about you know, the jacuzzi as being used as a kiddie pool, um, there should be one area that's either lower. We should have a pool where, uh, where uh, we could do other things. He has shown on this drawing for this to be a gradual entrance pool. And we move the steps to this area where there's a change from this square to that square. 
this is just work in progress. We met with the guy. We're going to meet with him again. Uh, we put some numbers in the budget to, to chick, fix and change all of this. What we've done is we put that at the end of the program, not at the beginning of the program. Obviously, if we're doing work for the tennis center and, and the cafe and all of that, we don't want to be putting stuff down that we're going to rip up later on. So that's, that would be you know, towards the end of the program, and it needs a, a lot more looking into. Um, the other thing that became apparent to us in various locations, uh, various groups, is that the jacuzzi that's there is pretty much illegal. It's not supposed to be that close to food. It's not supposed to be child accessible. It's supposed to have a barrier to entrance. It doesn't have any of that. Um, and so we're going to have to probably do something about that pretty soon. I've told Stuart, I think that maybe we need a temporary one somewhere else that's either half submerged or up, whatever. But that's something we have to take a look at. The fitness center. <clears throat> so here's the existing fitness center plan. You know, everybody pretty much knows what the, uh, what the issue is here. Um, UG, right? Tennis ops is too far. The, the equipment has just evolved. It hasn't really been laid out. The room, this room works. We use it a lot. Um, it's just we could use another one. The locker rooms are worn out and tired, and uh, the massage rooms are silly. From the day they went in, I'm told if you put a massage table in there, you couldn't walk around in the room. So yeah, they're, they're, there, and they're there on the plan. They're labeled massage rooms, but there's not actually, it's actually, I think, toilet paper in them now. Um, <clears throat> and so when I first looked at this, I mean, Stuart actually said to me when, when he wanted me to take a look at the gym, he said, you think we need to tear the building down? I went, no. What I like to do is rip the ceiling out, put it up high and all of that. And what became apparent is that the structure inside that roof that's in there is pretty complicated and uh, to do all the things I'd like to do. But there is two feet, uh, two feet of space between the existing ceiling and because the structure that was built up in there is built out of wood, what the building department made them do is put sheetrock on the bottom of it. And so we can go up two feet to the bottom of that sheetrock and raise the ceiling considerably. And what's not showing really clearly here is that this is a camfered wall. So it comes like that up to that ceiling to make it seem higher. And what we're able to do by doing that is we're able, the air conditioning starts over here in a room. We're able to put the ductwork all around the perimeter in that soffited ceiling and to put linear diffusers in that slanted wall and then put this is a company called the Big Ass Fan Company. So we're going to put a big ass fan in here to circulate it. Um, um, so I think you know, th there will be a dramatic effect by raising that ceiling, cleaning it up, making it better, making it more open. The office and the ops, uh, tennis ops are now moved over this way. But the other thing is, you know, I was a gym owner. I've owned a bunch of gyms. I've, this is the, I don't know how many gyms I've designed. Um, and one of the things that I have found that has always been successful is a change of material and, a ch and, and let the design define how the gym works and where the equipment is. And so, um, so there's this inner area that'll be either rubber or carpet. My preference is for a, a, a really durable carpet. And then on the perimeter goes the cardio equipment, the free weights, and on the interior would be the, uh, what I call selectorized equipment which is the equipment that you, um, and there, there's a couple of companies that I think are absolutely fabulous. You see in the rendering, there's that little yellow, one is called Techno Gym. You really can't have gym equipment anymore, unfortunately, not that it matters to me, but um, that doesn't have some sort of electronics with it. It counts what you do, it gives you a computer printout, you go back home, you could do it on there, and you could, your Fitbit ties into it. It does all kinds of stuff. Well, Techno Gym is the one that does that the most. Life Fitness does it. There's a bunch of others that do it. It's great stuff. And so, and the other thing is I'm recommending is that we lease it. We don't buy it. Um, and there'll be enough room for stretching. Now, what I will tell you is that we went to Techno Gym. I asked them for a layout because I didn't want to, like, give me one of those, give me one of those. They did it. We modified it a little bit. The gym folks haven't put their two cents in it yet. We haven't brought any consultants in to look at it. This is just a sketch in that sense of it's an idea and will be modified. So the other part of it is we're taking the what is now the pro shop and putting in giant sliding doors in here so that it can open up to the bigger space. We're making it a spin room or just another exercise room that has doors to the outside. Remember now I have the concrete slab that goes along the whole way in the back and you could have a couple times a day. There's certainly four or five months a year that you can spin in the weather. You could spin outside today. 
um, and um, and uh, that the the first go round, I, you know, I gutted every wall in the in the men's and ladies locker rooms and bathrooms, and it, and what happens is you get you keep creeping and creeping and creeping. You want to do this, you want to do that, and so didn't really think that there was that much merit in increasing them that much, but we are going to rip everything out in the sense of the tile, the floors, the fixtures, and replace them in new. We're showing here that ah, uh, the, the massage rooms become storage rooms um, off of that. Storage is a big issue here. We need to work that through. Um, and, then, and then, as you can see, this is the layout for the cafe again. Just working, this is a work in progress. Since uh, you know, a week or two ago, we bumped this wall out with a passage window here so that um, it can be, you know, most, most times it's a one-man, two-man two operation in there, uh, building some storage to the outside, a door. Um, and uh, that's kind of it. You can see how we're shaving the wall over here to bring this in here. A lot of this, this is not, we didn't really have a design this yet. There's a pattern of how things are going to be. Um, but, you know, the net effect is you get a pretty nice cleaned up gym here. And I have been in, I, I think, ten, 10 gyms now in other clubs. And there's two distinct kinds of gyms. There's the life fitness gyms, like St. Andrews, where you have, you know, 150 pieces of equipment and 40 people working out, and it's like going to life fitness. And Stuart said to me, when I first took this on, and said it to me a second time, and I've told the story a bunch of times, are you sure that we don't have to tear that building down? I was like, I better think about this one. And the more I thought about it, especially after the real estate day, was that all the things that he talked about this place, the size, the quaintness of it, the landscaping, there's an appropriateness to who we are and what we are. And that's what this gym is. It's appropriate to who we are and what we are. We don't need life fitness. We don't need 17 treadmills. There's already more treadmills on this layout than we have today. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that this will be, you know, terrific. If anything, there'll be more usage, and so maybe it gets a little bit crowded. We've got to do things with scheduling. But nonetheless, I think it's going to end up being terrific. It's appropriate for us, and I think people will like it. Signage in the guardhouses. So Stuart asked me about signage, and um, what I said was, well, you already have a signage program. That's these signs that we use up here, you know, and what, what I call these the Edgar Allan Poe tombstones. <laughs> the Edgar Allan Poe tombstones can bite the dust. We can take the signage program that we have now, make some nice signs, they're manufactured. People don't have to design them. We could buy it not off the shelf, but almost off the shelf. And we could change the signs out. And it, that there'll be one of these by the tennis center, by the aquatic center, by the fitness center. And so that the place has a theme and it carries on to all the other signage that we have everywhere else. So that's what we're proposing for signage. OK, the guard gates. This is the current entrance to um, a power line. And you know, I started looking at it, and the more I looked at it, the more that I went, it's, it's kind of weird. Everything about it is weird. The land that's in front of it, we don't own. We're supposed to maintain it. The, the sign out on Boca Grove Boulevard is just nonsensical. It was never there originally in any of the original designs for Boca Grove. It got added at some point. Um, and then I met with the guards, and the thing that struck me the most in talking to the guards was they can't see out the windows especially at nighttime, because at nighttime, there's no general illumination in these areas, in the front as well. And so what happens is they put the lights on inside, it's dark outside, they look in the window, they see themselves. <laughs> I'm going, you know, hopefully ISIS doesn't come here. Um, I mean, they would, just, they would get the duck earlier, I guess, I don't know. But at any rate, you can see all the stuff that's in the way. The trees are magnificent. There are three magnificent Royal palms there, but they're in the way. I love trees. I want to save those trees. I think we should put them somewhere else or sell them and make money, whatever. Um, but the trees are in the way. Um, the planting is haphazard. My favorite, everybody's favorite, is the fountain. Um, and um, you know, when you the other the other thing that we got is on on this entrance in particular, when people reach out to give their license, they get wet when it rains, and so. 
Um, what we said is just clear it out. Um, take, take the building and clad it with some kind of stone, relatively inexpensive stuff. You go glue it on. Um, if we're ambitious, we can replace the windows with uh, hurricane windows and mutton windows. We can build a little awning out here. Now, we can't go past the curb with an awning because a fire truck has to be able to fly through here. So we won't, be, uh, we won't be, by code, be able to do that. But we could build a little bit of coverage. And so what we've shown is you could do it. You could do it with a sign like this. You could do it with a wall sign. You could, do it, you could paint it. Um, you could tromploy the bottom part dark. You know, get rid of uh, seven different kinds of variety of plants. Make one dramatic statement. And it's a brand. I mean, that's one of the things that we're trying to talk about. We talk about marketing. Part of the marketing program is to brand who you are and have a clear identity as to who you are, not that you come into three trees and you kind of try and figure out what's there. And so it, some version of this, and again, uh, I would never kill a tree in my, I mean, I love those trees. I think that we should relocate them or do something with them. Same thing on the front, following that concept through. If you, if you see the current conditions, it, this is a not a bad building. It's just everything, everything up front is overgrown. Now these pictures are about six or seven months old. That's when I did this. This is not current, so forgive me for that. Um, but um, it's, it's just, you know, the fence up here is painted white, and it's a, just a little drab. There's no identity once you get past the front entrance. So what we're saying is, let's clad the building in stone like we're cladding the other buildings. Again, this is not costly stuff at all. Let's put a sign up here, whether it's this kind of a sign or the other sign that goes from post to post give us some identity, and then everywhere, dramatic planting. I don't know if this is it, or they're doing a, they're, Dave, they're doing a great job with the begonias and everything they're doing. Everything looks really terrific in my opinion. I think that, that kind of an effect, um, and, and when, you, when we come to the next one, this is everybody's favorite. This is like the upscaled sign for the homeless place. Um, and when I, when, I, when I took this photo, this, this stuff went all the way to over here, and I was walking through it because I was trying to figure out what was going on with this planter. And I told Dave, and Dave said, you walk through that stuff? I went, yeah. He goes, that's where the iguanas live. I was like, what? They, they, this is like gourmet food to them. So at any rate, the more I looked at what was going on up there, there's a drawing over here, just a quick sketch. It really is symmetrical. The wall was built pretty symmetrical. And these planters, which look haphazard, really are not. There's a pattern to them. It's just everything is overgrown so much. So again, in keeping with everything else, we don't want to spend, we don't want to have, you know, mermaids and fountains and all that stuff here. We want to salvage what we got. So all I'm proposing is that we clad it with stone, maybe raise it a little bit, put a bronze, bronze Boca Grove sign up that's backlit so it lights up a little bit at night. Get rid of those guys and put something dramatic in there. I mean, we have enough landscaping experts around here to figure out what would be really cool to put there. Um, the other important part of it is the fence that's in here. You can't really see it in the existing, but it's like white and falling down. New black wrought iron fence. And I think these columns, when they're clad in stone, again, not expensive, look really handsome. And so I think it's just, it's appropriate, again, to who we are. It's an understated, but it's cleaned up and it's nice. We can, we can modify it a little bit, but that's sort of the idea. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carmine. Now we'd like to ask our treasurer, Robert Furr, to give us an update on uh, how we're going to pay for all of this. Thank you, Stuart. And thank you, Carmine. A great job. Um, the board looked at. The, the board looked at the economics of this, and we did the plans. I've heard people tell me this is going to cost $10 million and $15 million. Well, it's not going to cost that. Um, and we're going to do this with no additional assessments. That's what this calls for. Currently, we have current capital reserves. We have, as we said earlier, we have a club capital reserve of $750,000, a social capital reserve of $2,571,000. This is of January the 1st, 2016. The POA capital reserves are 344,000 in the POA capital 
and $270,000 in the roadway reserve. The total project cost of what you've seen today is $4,218,000. Okay, it's an incredible price. And that includes a 10% contingency. That includes all the furniture, everything you've talked about today. That's the total cost. And how are we going to pay for it? Um, we have a schedule of how this is going to be built. It's going to take three years to build it. And we're going to schedule it out as we do the work. In the first year, 2016, we're going to spend $2,135,000 on the clubhouse. That's this floor and the floor below. You haven't seen pictures of the floor below, but in the budget are carpeting and furniture and re rehabilitation for the golf shop, for the uh, ladies and men's locker rooms. So that'll look brand new also in the men's card room downstairs. The POA in the first year will spend $154,000, and that'll be for the guard houses and signage, which can start right away once you approve this. In 2017, we'll spend $946,000, and that'll be primarily the cost of the fitness center and some other work. And in 2018, the club's going to spend $483,000 to finish the work in the club and another possible $500,000 for outside lighting. And all that together is $4,218,000. The source of those funds are as follows. From the reserves we have of $2.5 million we talked about earlier, we're going to spend a million and a half this year on that for the club. And we collect from you every month already a capital contribution, which is about $510,000 per year. And we'll use that this year in addition to the $1.5 million. Now, if we're short, We've spoken to our bank, Wells Fargo, who has agreed to make us a $1 million three-year loan for construction purposes, for cash flow purposes only, at about 4.5% interest. <clears throat> In 2017, we'll spend the same $510,000 and possibly four thirty-six dollars from the bank loan. In 2018, five ten zero from the bank loan. And in 2019, five ten, and we pay back the bank loan. So it's paid off after three years. We have or don't think we'll even have to use it. That's a backup for us. The POA sources of funds are the 433,000 reserves, the current capital contribution, and you see we have the money there to do the work in the POA. Timing process. Now let Stuart discuss that if you want to. As you can see, the project is phased in, but here's our timetable to begin. Uh, Robert will shortly make a motion that uh, for the board to approve that we will take this project to the membership for your approval. And we anticipate getting that, uh, the documentation out by the 1st of February, and we would hope that you would approve it by April 1st. The permitting and bidding process would start April 1st, take about two months, uh, and we will receive three bids uh, for this project. Uh, and we'll go through a formal bidding uh, process. And assuming everything goes to this calendar, we'll start the renovation June 1 to June 15. Uh, and as I said earlier, it has, uh, it's been phased in. We've had uh, professionals do the costing, and we are confident that you will give us the approval so we can move forward with this project and upgrade Boca Grove. And with that, Robert, would you like to make your motion? I'd like to make a motion for the POA and the board that we approve the, the, um, the work in progress. The birth has been shown to you tonight at a cost of four point, what was it? Uh, 428 dollars that it go out to the membership for a vote and then we proceed we proceed with it forthwith is there, a, is there a second to that motion Frank thank you very much now we'll open the floor for questions
the board has made a decision that we will present this project as one total project for you to either vote up or vote down. So to answer your first question, obviously we have the detail of what each item will cost. But the vote will be to approve this process and this project in its entirety. Stan. Can't hear you, there's a microphone. If this is approved, you say you will start the renovation June 1st of 2016. <clears throat> but you, <clears throat> excuse me, you listed other going forward years as 2017, 2018, et cetera. Is it proposed that in those years, the renovation for that part of it would be begin on January 1st, or will it go out into the year? I'm looking at how long this is actually going to take. Well, we have the project scheduled, and it has to be sequenced. So if you think about the clubhouse, the first thing that would happen is we'd start construction in the ladies' card room. When that is complete, we would then start construction for the bar area, and it would proceed that way. Probably simultaneously, we do the first floor. If you think about the fitness center, uh, proposal. First, we have to build the tennis building. And so, in all probability, in all probability, there may be some gaps in time where there is no construction. But the other thing that, that we should mention now, obviously, when we do the fitness center, we'll have to close down the fitness center. We are beginning the investigation of looking at nearby clubs as to whether they might uh, provide us the ability to use their fitness center. We would do it like the golf course. The club would pay the fees to the, to the other clubs, and our members would have access to those clubs. By the way, I forgot one thing. Since Robert talked about, uh, about financing, the one thing we haven't discussed is that last year, there was an assessment to pay down our bank line of credit of $2,000. This year, we were able to reduce that to $600. The anticipation is that next year, there will not be that, uh, that assessment will not be necessary. We will have reduced our line of credit so that it is only used to cover the timing differences between expenses and revenues. I saw a hand back here. Yes, ma'am. Can you come up? Can you come up to the microphone? Oh, we'll bring you the mic. I think it's great that we want to do all of this stuff, but considering our record with building, don't you think maybe it would be good to do one project at a time and then progress that way? And we can keep all the planning, but let's see how it goes. We hear you. Uh, we respectfully disagree. We think that we have our arms around the cost thing. We think we've done it in a, in a professional way, and we believe that we can accomplish this within the budget that you've seen. Now, remember, it is And phased. if it's not completed in that it budget, is, what happens? Say it again. What if it's not completed in that budget? What if the first room we see the, you don't like? The project is phased. Yes, and, but, but we really don't know what it's going to look like. And Yes, you do. You've, you've seen what it's going to look like. No, we don't. Well, we, we, we once we again. We saw things for this clubhouse, yes. and I will tell you, none of it is here. What we saw is not what we got. Well, well. That, that may be the one project that did come in over budget. I wasn't here at the time, oh, was okay. this clubhouse. But the golf course was brought in essentially on budget. But the golf course is and, an aesthetic. And we anticipate and commit that we will bring this project in on budget. Yes, all the way in the back. I can't see who it is. Do you put a limit on how much it can spend so that it can go? The limit? 
The limit is four. The limit is four million two hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. Yes. Uh, Chet. <laughs> Chet. We believe we believe it's legal. Elaine. Thank you. Does anyone have a concept of the downtime during the construction re reconstruction of our clubhouse? Because this is very important. We won't have the functionality of it and also it will discourage any home buyers from coming in here if they do, don't have the use of the club. So I was thinking on previous jobs that I've been on, I've always had two crews, two construction crews. Is there any way that we could expedite this project so we have more time to use it and less time to be without it? We, we believe that there will be minimal impact on members' experience. Let me finish. Okay. When we are working on chippers and the grill room, this room will be available for dining. When that is complete, we will begin construction on this. So it's going to be phased in a way that we will have minimal impact on our member experience. All right, is, is there anyone in the construction industry that understands two crews are possible? Because that would really expedite things. The one works from eight to four, and then we bring some other people on? Yes, yes, let's, we hear let's you. Pr let's pursue that, because that would really we, be very beneficial. We hear you, and that will be considered. Alan? Well, the question really is going to be sent to the members where you will formally vote for this project and we will give you more detail in that. Thank you, we agree with you. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. You didn't mention anything about the current kitchen. I'm assuming if you're going to do things in um, one degree at a time, the kitchen will remain as it is, so it will be functional. Is that correct? That is correct. The kitchen is not being touched. Yes, Don. There's a mic over there somewhere. First, I'd like to thank Carmine, who I think did a very good job. <laughs> Second of all, this seems rather familiar in regard to what we were asked to vote on with the clubhouse. The amount of money that we were told was $11 million, and we still today do not have any idea how much money was spent, and a lot of things that we thought we were getting, we never got. It seems to me uh, we're getting an awful lot for a very reasonable price. And I'm just concerned that we'll find ourselves in a position that we'll go over budget. And as a result, I think it would be a wise decision financially to do one thing at a time. If you do one thing well, then I think we should go on to the next and the next and the next. And there's one question I want to ask also, and that is, is there going to be a vote or is it going to be a consent form? It's going to be a consent form. Then it's not a vote. And the reason I ask you that question, with a consent form, those people that did not respond were solicited and some say they were intimidated. And I don't think that's a proper thing. Thank you. Thank you. As far as your first, 
As far as your first comment, as I said earlier to another question, you will approve a project that consists of all of the items that were presented tonight for a total cost of $4,218,000. The board will not be authorized to spend one penny beyond that unless it comes back to the membership for approval. Other? Yes, David. Well, the, the, mold, the mold has been addressed in the clubhouse. The air conditioning, if it needs work, uh, we have adequate funds to take care of that. Issues pertaining to Whitaker Drive. Um, there was mention of a speed bump because the entrance to the aquatic center was going to be changed. But with regards to safety on Whitaker, there was no inclusion of anything about any uh, speed are, bumps or safety. And this seems like an excellent opportunity if a path could be included in this on the clubhouse side of Whitaker so that there was a continuous sidewalk. Uh, you wouldn't need to put speed bumps that people have complained about, and you would have the best safety um, because they wouldn't be needing to cross the road in that dangerous hairpin well, turn. Well, I, I think you're talking about extending the walk that's there that ends at Las Reos? On the, on the golf side, to continue that going around Whitaker on the clubhouse side where there's a lot of grass and landscaping, the sidewalk could continue and then well, have a direct crossover. We and won't do it as part of this. We are looking at Whitaker and the safety issues, and we are soliciting proposals for signage and speed bumps as we speak. But, but as part I of hear, an, a, we'll a comprehensive aesthetic picture and together with Carmine's expertise in the development of this whole plan, it seems that a continuous walkway certainly would make sense. We'll certainly look at that. Other questions? In the plan that we're doing for the front, has anybody talked about addressing the side where the, where the gas station is now built up and it still kind of looks pretty bad over on that area. Past, past the exit gate. Past the gate. Yes. We, uh, as a matter of fact, it's not part of this project. We are looking at that now. We have a proposal to take out the plantings and put in okay. the fishtails that are behind Hidden Lake yep. that block everything. We believe that that will be done over the next few months. All right, perfect. Larry? Larry? Yeah, I'd just like to, as, as someone who's been through this before, as many of us had, uh, the gold standard seems to be don't spend too much gold. Um, as a result, for instance, we have this dividing wall here because we didn't want to put the money in seven, eight years ago to do the structural work that needed to be done so we wouldn't have to do it again. It is absolutely incredible that these guys put this together, the professionals that are here, Carmen's here, the, um, and the amount of money um, that um, our professionals believe, our professional independent team believes that we can do. So again, having been through this before, all I would ask personally is that when we're out at the tennis court, when we're out playing golf, we're out doing this, again, everybody here is a CEO of a company and everybody here can do it better. The bottom line is about respect, about conversation, so when the vote comes up, it's not full of rumor, innuendo, all kinds of things. There's no way this is gonna cost $10 million and it's not gonna cost what they say it is. And next thing you know, we're behind the times as well. All we should do is really trust, listen, again, inspect what you expect, always ask the right questions, do exactly what we're doing here today, but when we get out there tomorrow and we're sitting around over that cup of coffee, try not to make up the stories that you believe that it is and believe that we can make this and we can make it happen. So. Thank you. Thank you. Maureen. Maureen. Uh, Stuart, hi. Uh, I have to say also uh, on behalf of me and my husband who's not here that this looks great and I really appreciate what you've done 
and I hope it goes through. But uh, I've been trying to get a dog park in Boca Grove for four years at least. And I met with David and I met with you and I was told that it had to be part of this overall project even though it's a minimal amount of money. Um, and I just wonder, is that going to go forward with this proposal to the community to be voted on? No, or? Aureen, the board, the board discussed the dog park and felt at this point in time it was not a priority. And by the way, it's not a little bit of money. It's a substantial amount of money. A hundred, uh, under $100,000. No, no. Well, our estimate is much more than that. But no, forgetting the cost, the board... The board considered it and came to the conclusion that at this point in time, it wasn't high enough on the priority list to proceed. Oh, that's too Bob? bad. I think you've. Uh, Go ahead. Put it on. It's on. It's on. I think you should be. Uh, you put this together. I have to admit, before you, before tonight. I was a naysayer. After tonight, you have my vote. Thank you very much. Sarah, Sarah. No, no, Robert, Robert, Sarah first. David was up earlier. I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more about the park. The park's flooring is in major disrepair, um, and also the youth um, area that you proposed. The, our kids are some of the youth in the area, and I can tell you right now, one of the reasons that they go inside to hang oh, out oh. is because of the mosquitoes and the heat. And so something that's like a gazebo that's open, I'm not really sure that it's gonna be worth the money because I'm not sure that they're going to utilize that space. So it's just something to think about before you move forward with that area. Sarah, you're right about the flooring in that playground area. That is going to be repaired very shortly. David Gourlay, I don't know where he is, uh, but he's on that, and I think, I think that work is going to start very shortly. Great. Thank okay. you, Stuart. Alan? Are the numbers available for each project at the office? Not yet. Okay. No. Can we get the PowerPoint? Any other Stuart, questions? Can we get the PowerPoint? Is that available? We'll put the PowerPoint on Good the idea. website. As, as part of this meeting. Yes, Dave. Hey, Stuart. Uh, obviously, it, it's pretty obvious to me that this is uh, three areas that are being uh, proposed for renovation. And uh, I understand you don't want to make it three separate uh, approvals. However, the, the, the areas that of more serious need here to me seem to be the pool and the fitness area, which is just horrible. Not that I use it, but I, I just, we but I just think, but when I we drive noticed. by, I mean, it, my wife does, okay, which, which would be the, the primary concern to me, and especially for social members, and for us to attract the kind, of, uh, the kind of families and people that are coming into Boca Grove, which is the social assessment that we're trying to spend here. Um, uh, I think that is the number one priority. I think the, uh, uh, the, the uh, clubhouse uh, is probably... The second thing that needs to be done since we just spent $22 million on the clubhouse, and I agree this could be... One conversation, please. Okay. This, this could be interesting, and I think they did a wonderful job, and I think the renderings look fantastic. I wish we had done it the first time. Uh, to address Larry, and Larry, I was on the board with Larry when we were doing the clubhouse. To be honest with you, Larry, I thought we were going to put in the steel beams so we wouldn't have the doors here when we did the clubhouse the first time. So I don't know why they weren't there. Well. Maybe somebody can answer that question for well, me. But I, I, I'd like to see this broken down so we could do one project at a time, starting with the fitness center, because I think that is the area of most concern. And the, uh, the, the gatehouses, which is really a POA issue, really is not uh, a club issue and should be a separate ballot. I'm sorry. That's, that's all I can we'll say. Speak, and the other thing is... I We'll really speak would, to our attorney about that. Yeah. Well, I really would like you to address uh, the financing process that we have here. And we could possibly save enough money on how much we're paying on the loan for this clubhouse to pay for all this without all these other assessments that we're paying for. Just an observation. Thank well, you very much. Let me, let me deal with the first part. The $2.1 million in 2016 
starts the process, starts the work in the clubhouse, and simultaneously addresses the fitness center. But in order to do the fitness center, we first have to build a tennis building. So that will start, simul once you vote for it, Dave, it will start immediately. As far as your last question on the, on the note here, we have seven years left on this, on this note. And I heard you say we could save money by refinancing. The facts are we can't because we did an interest rate swap. And if we prepay that to refinance it, we have about a, almost a million and a half dollar uh, penalty paying off the swap. So you don't save any money by prepaying and refinancing. Well, that may or may not have been a good deal at the time. I don't know. Bernie? However, during these 26 years, so many of our capital projects, so many of our capital amenities have been woefully um, neglected as per the presentation that was made in terms of our competition, who is constantly upgrading. And so um, in addressing some of the comments about one at a time kind of thing, we don't have time to do one at a time. Let's get it all done together. I think this board has wrapped around its hands over the entire project. My congratulations to them, as so many of other people have said as well. So, and I thank you. Thank you. Vivian, Vivian, I think you had your hand up. No mention has been made of the turn, so I'm assuming we can assume that will remain there. No, the turn, when we, when we build what, what you saw as the 19th hole at this end of the building, the turn will be closed, and that will become, in essence, the new turn. Bob? It's, it's because you've already paid the first quarter. And so the 266 is nine months, and the ensuing years are 12 months. I saw another hand go up. Oh, Mike. The answer is there's an elevator and there's a stairs. We're gonna, we, we contemplate putting a telephone out on the eighth tee box. So if you want to pre-order, you can call, and we can have it waiting for you downstairs. But you need the exercise anyway. Are there, and I see no other questions. Is there any new business to come before? Oh, excuse me. We must call the question for the board. All those in favor, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion, Aye. unanimous. Thank you very much. Is there, any, is there any new business to come before the board? Hearing, hearing none, the club meeting is adjourned. We now must call to order the POA meeting. Thanks. Thanks, Larry. What do we do about the POA meeting? Make a mo We call the POA meeting to order. Frank, Frank Madalena. We have presented. We have presented the minutes from our December POA meeting. Is there a motion to approve as presented? So move. All in favor? Is there any new business to come before the POA? Hearing none, a motion to adjourn. Done.
Thank you very much. Good job. 